Creative Aging Program at the Brooklyn Public Library. And um, if you do not want to show your image or um, your voice, then please turn off your video. And uh, because we are recording the program uh, live streaming on YouTube and uh, the class is also going to stay on YouTube afterwards uh, for additional viewing in the future. So uh, turn off your video. Um, please also be aware that your name on screen will be visible also. Uh, we are basically showcase spotlighting to Henry Lee's screen. Um, well, here is Henry Lee. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. <laughs> This is our uh, second last uh, second from the last class. We're going to study pumpkins. It's a very seasonal theme. Um, and Yong Le has done a very uh, comprehensive work on introducing the cultural and the um, symbolism of uh, pumpkins. Uh, please read the, the article in the emails with the handouts. Um, the handouts, uh, as you see here on the lower left, uh, has some more information on technique uh, notes, and also uh, some translation of the inscriptions on particular painting. Uh, let's go through the uh, uh, technical notes on how to paint vine. Uh, on my on my table, you can see a, a student work uh, by um, Guo Xiu Yi, um, the uh, lady student uh, of uh, the master. And on the uh, left hand, you can see, let me show you, I'm sorry. Um, uh, okay. This is, the, yeah, here you can see a larger picture of the master painting, uh, which is uh, almost identical to the student work. Um, so there are, there are three components in the uh, painting of pumpkins. Uh, the vine, uh, the leaves, and the, the uh, melon. And we usually do the leaf first, and then the melon, the, Vine or the stem and the tendril will come the last. Uh, in our previous class, we did uh, something um, with morning glory, uh, like, like, like this, right? It has tendrils also. Um, and uh, I noticed uh, maybe I made uh, some uh, mistake, so it caused some misunderstanding of uh, the, the difference between the tendril and uh, the vine. So I want to make a distinction on that. Uh, let me just to show you what I mean by vine and the tendril. So the vine, usually uh, the stem part, it could be thicker uh, in the case of pumpkins, but in like uh, the grass, um, plants uh, with a morning glory, they are about the same width. So uh, you, you usually don't make a, the tendril like, you know. Tendril can go from uh, uh, the middle of something. It, it's what uh, uh, the plant try to find a hand of something, you know. So, but they can also uh, hang on itself. So they could be tendril on, on the main stem. So the stem could be, could have some, some uh, loops, but not, uh, not to make, you know, just li like a round turn, like that. You could, you can make a kind of curve uh, arcs between sections okay and you try to vary the, the angle the length of each arc or each curve uh, but um, 
I see a lot of people just make a, like this and then this and then that. You don't make this kind of turn. These are tangles. So you, when you make this, you make, um, I try to, I said something like uh, to avoid telephone Y. What I mean is this, um, you don't want to make the tendril just like, you know, like this loops, like a telephone wire. That's what I mean by telephone wire. So you want to vary the uh, rhythm a little bit. So some ten, some more uh, close together, maybe you know some loose. So you, but you can make a reverse loop sometimes to to. And you can make some uh, uh, overlapping. So that's all possible to break this this kind of um, te telephone wire thing. All right, all right. So you you can just practice something like this, you know, to loose up before you do the final work. So the the main the main uh, line is like continued W's or M's or uh, you know it, when I st when I start to sync I cannot do it so the, the point is you need to free yourself just you know just lose yourself you, you can go up and down or back and forth left and right you know just um, vary the uh, stroke of uh, dragging and uh, pouring. So sometimes you you, you drag or pour the brush. And sometimes you draw with the tip of the brush. Let, let me show you. Sometimes you you start like from the tip of the brush, and uh, then you can start pouring some. You know. So just kind of, you can make some uh, angular turns, some uh, curve lines like that. So just vary the rhythm. And if you if you think there's something wrong, you can make uh, uh, another line. Try to hide that. And you can, but uh, you know, not repeat the same. So you try to. I just try to to play with this kind of line, you know. See if we well, try not to make any composition. Just try to combine two lines, and uh, you know, see if it's too smooth, you can add this kind of line. But try to avoid the the mistake. I I see a lot of people. Most people just make this. This is not good. You can you can make a a sharp turn, you know, a sudden change of direction, but uh, uh, not make a loop like that because you would you will see this immediately in any painting. That's uh, uh, too attention uh, grabbing. Sometimes some, you know you try to avoid that. Okay, uh, to avoid that, you can make. Uh, yeah, you can change that. You can just lose it. Not to make a circle. To avoid the circle. Okay, just say, um, yeah, avoid the, the circle. Alright, so when we paint the pumpkins, um, you can start from the pumpkins. Uh, if if uh, you don't have room for everything, I would just do uh, the pumpkin itself and the stand. Uh, let me show you a picture I've got. Uh, this is a, a greeting card, actually. Uh, it was framed. I, I changed the frame so you can still see the, the frame. That uh, I used to have. Uh, it's only um, the pumpkin, the vine, the little stem. And I did uh, some detail with the... the I want to show you. This is one of, one of my best-selling cards I created uh, with uh, ants. I, I think nobody did do that before. So I tried to create the contrast between the 
uh, the size of the, the pumpkin and the, the little ants. That's one. And then here's another card I did um, with a, a basket. Uh, these are watercolor paper. Watercolor uh, doesn't smear, you see. Uh, this kind of line uh, in watercolor represents the shady part, the uh, the shady part between the ribs. But in master cheese painting, it it might uh, doesn't matter. It's just uh, contour of the the rib doesn't have to do with the lighting. Okay. Uh, just you know, shady part. So that's what uh, the watercolor uh, think. This is more watercolor, the more, more of a watercolor. But I I didn't do the the background or just like a still life. It's a it's just a, uh, a imaginative painting. Okay, here's another one I did on rice paper with this same. It's a lot. So the fan face shape painting, you, uh, you can see uh, the. I probably did the vine first, and I like it. And the, then I added the pumpkin with the uh, uh, um, with ants. It goes uh, behind the pumpkin. Do you like this? <laughs> Just uh, uh, this one is done uh, with the data of the 90, uh, I think, uh, yeah, 90, 1989. So almost uh, 30, mm -hmm. 30 some years. Right? Yeah. I'm going to use uh, um, unsized paper. Just uh, this paper is not big enough, but you can see you, you, you 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 can use smaller brush if you do uh, uh, on a smaller okay. paper. Uh, it's good to do some study with uh, small paper so you practice the layout. Uh, it's easier to control the layout on smaller paper. Uh, the uh, composition and we use soft brush to do the leaves and the pumpkins uh, and the stiff brush. You can use the uh, Bajor hairbrush, or this is a mixed hairbrush, uh, landscape brush, football landscape, and then our go-to brush is a um, stiff brush to do the. I can use smaller brush, the the brown ones to do the tendrils. Okay, and uh, let's see for this uh, um, for this sample on the. Cannot um, we'll do the leaves first. Okay, we got ink only. We don't need any greens. And I just used the uh, uh, soft brush the library provided to, uh, in the first lesson. Very soft. S and uh, here's how I loaded the brush. First of all, you you, you um, soak the brush first. Soak the brush completely, and get some water on the on the palette, and then uh, dilute it to get a light ink. Okay, a light very light ink. It's probably it's two to three in the on the bottom of the brush. You can get some more water to the bottom, so it's lighter. I want I try to get a gradation. Uh, so this is the dark, light gray, gray. Then I got darker gray, not the darkest though. So how do I get that? Um, I just touch the pure ink without blending, and you can soften the very tip of it by dipping in the water quickly, just b uh, before you touch the paper. So touch a little bit of water. So this is how we do it, and. Uh, uh, there's another way you can see how uh, that works to avoid a hard edge. Uh, so this is how 
it starts it, the darkest part here, right? Because I got the dark, right? The dark here. And uh, on the left side, so probably the golden spot here on this side, just the rectangular shape. This is a semi size shun. So it's not abs absorbent uh, that much. So I can do slower. That's the advantage uh, of semi sized shun. Not the uh, unsized. So I can go slower, you see. Because if I turn it over, it's semi size, not penetrate through, right? And then I, I cannot like uh, overlap with the first one a little bit. Then I uh, press all the way to the bottom of the, the, the heel of the brush. You can use the heel of the brush to, to, do, to make the uh, soft part and then try to... When you need the, uh, the dark, it, you, you turn to the tip, right? So that rubs so I, I kind of shift, twist a little bit. So I want it dark on the, on the right side. And then overlap with the second stroke. I got a roughly uh, IV shape, some, you know, some shape between the, the there's, there's a notch there in between the two strokes. It gives the uh, IV, IV uh, leaf shape, right? Um, the gradation is may not so strong because uh, the paper, I think, doesn't. If you use uh, rice paper, the unsized paper, it will keep the gradation. That's the advantage of absorbent paper. If it's non-absorbent, it will turn to flat, like a watercolor paper. You cannot keep the gradation. That's why we use what uh, we use. Uh, but there's a way to to um, make it up later. Um, and uh, we can reload a little dark, and soften it edge a little bit. But this time it should be lighter than this, so I probably need to add a little dark. While it's still wet, you can charge, you can charge it. And you can you can use dry, dry, dark brush to charge to add a little uh, value to the light. Just to kind of fake a little bit. Okay. And then I dilute it with water again, uh, without blending. I do this uh, this side, just dry brushing a little bit, and then you can you can uh, you can use clean water to blend it. Wash the brush again, but I I will save it. I use another brush to do the tendril or the vine. Before I load that, I just kind of soften this a little bit. Okay. Uh, let's do the, the melon now. The melon is on this side. Okay. Uh, it's it's kind of uh, um, uh, oval, or what do you call this shape? Not not a round. Um, it comes with uh, f one, two, three, four, five, or six uh, ribs, and we use a medium medium gray, which is lighter than we uh, will later use for the uh, the little stem so it could be drier for easier control if you want to uh, on, a, on an absorbent paper and that uh, this stroke let me enlarge it okay this this stroke is tip concealed stroke which means you hold the brush straight okay I use a stiff brush. Uh, you can you can load a little darker to the tip if you want. So um, I see the sequences from right to left. Okay, let's go. It's uh, um, it's probably better to start from the middle one. That that 
the largest section in the middle. Uh, you might do it to uh, do this one from uh, both sections. Let's do this. So one from left to the right goes up, and then you you start from here. It's between round oval, uh, so it's like squirrel, squirrel. Okay, square square oval. It's, it's too wet. Okay, so. You can use the blotting paper to control the smearing. And there, it has some um, flying white, which gives some rough texture. So I try to simulate that. You, I dry the brush a little more. And then just put a little ink in the tip to hold the brush straight. It goes up like that and turns. Keep the brush. You can have some split hair if you want. But keep the, um, the brush straight. You can go back a little bit, just like you're writing a standard calligraphy. And these two ribs overlap. Overlap. Okay, and uh, here is another. So that's the shape of uh, this a little bit distort uh, shape of a... Uh, let me just make up a little bit. Mist. Okay, now I add a little dark ink, and you can dilute it a little bit, so it's not really pure black. To dot the the stem that comes with uh, this, what still a remaining of the calyx, the, the flower part, right? And then the the stem just on top of that. It's like the f the um, the cup we did with this, the passima, same thing, same kind of idea. So there are four strokes or five strokes, doesn't matter. Some some uh, dots. Okay, now I dry the brush with with the thirsty brush. I I just touch a little dark ink, uh, darker gray maybe, um, to do the the vines. Okay, so let me show you the whole thing. We have to do the. Uh, line with a very fluid, it, you know, very fast. So you need to do the thicker ones first. Um, if the if the leaf is very wet, you can uh, you can hair dry it a little bit, <laughs> or just wait, uh, because here there's overlapping. But you can see the smearing, right? It's, it's okay to have some smearing. Uh, it's particularly on this paper, it's a semi-size, so I don't really um, worry too much. And you can, you can add the veins uh, before, the, before the ink gets too dry. I already did some earlier, so I, I just add the center one, the side already there when I uh, charged with dark. Okay, I just add a, dark, uh, a center one, vein there. And then I do a uh, this kind of shape. How do I describe it? Just like writing a character, uh, like a Cao Shu or grass style, cursive style calligraphy. And you can make uh, some little vines on top. Twist the brush with your finger when you when you pull the brush. And you go, you got all the um, all the, t all the uh, turns. So you twist a little bit while you do this. So everything moves. A little bit. So you use the tip of the brush. Okay, uh, let me do the other, the main vines first, and then we do the tendril around that. Uh, uh, that's uh, the adjustment. So you, you, do, you do the thicker ones first. The, this one goes up. Okay, and then continues behind the the. You have to indicate the the ins and out. Okay, the it comes in from here and goes down. Maybe a little behind and goes continue and goes behind. Here's the exit part. Okay, it's near the the bottom of the squash uh, the melon, and do a, a sharp 
kind of U turn, uh, not U turn, this left turn, and then goes. Um, I cannot see where the exit is. Maybe it goes up to this side, but not to the corner, definitely. So you want to go like that, maybe. It's like a Z or the Z shape, exaggerated shape with tail. Okay, now we could do some loop uh, with a like a big, big loop, big circles is fine. Not the smaller ones because the eye that I talked about really is, uh, grab too much attention. But if you make it a little loose and vary the size. Would be fine. Now we have I, I see some kind of like an M, M movement. So it goes, it goes like that. It goes down. Just like you sign your name, you know, you you like a letter, letter writing, calligraphy uh, with a with a brush, like you how you sign your name. Just put your signatures there. And here we got some more. Um, but not so tight, so it's a little bit uh, loose. Okay, so, yeah, I got it here. Let me just continue to. Uh, I see. Um, uh, actually, there are just two circles, like big. It goes. Okay, I already did this. Let me just. Oh, here is the change of direction, like that. And this one can go up, I think. Yeah, the rith rhythm is uh, very important. By rhythm, I mean, you know, some uh, dance, some sparse, so sparse, this dance. Right. You can dance and sparse, so they are not equal. If you just draw the, if you look at uh, a beginner's work, uh, you will see a relatively less. But it, this isn't, you know, it's good uh, with the fluency that uh, with a, you know, a, a, a new student in the maybe first or second year. Uh, very nice, very good, and uh, this can see the line quality very bit, very nice. But uh, compared to the master work, uh, the difference is the rhythm it has more. Uh, it's more uh, with the master, right? The dance and sparse contrast is stronger. So let me let me add a little color to finish this one, and you can use a clean brush if you want, uh, without washing the brush. I'm I'm using the. Uh, color for this uh, according to the inscription of the, on this piece uh, the master liked uh, the guya means uh, ancient or old elegant color so you want to make the pumpkin uh, look uh, look like a uh, with a classical or ancient uh, elegancy I don't know how to translate guya it's uh, like an antique, antique, antiquarian, uh, including the lines. You know, it should look like a uh, ancient um, rubbing or something. S you know, like a this is dry. So I, I used the Amber six eighty four, but I got a new tube here. It's unopened. Just put on the side. Yeah. Umber. And you can add a little yellow, um, if you will. I got a uh, orange yellow, which is little red. Okay, let's just mix them. It's good to have a little bit ink, kind of muted. 
I just clean the palette here, and I uh, I can add the yellow later. So this one goes uh, uh, from top down. Okay, and you can use the whole side of the brush, so it got, it has a little bit gradation that it's lighter on the on the. Uh, uh, my right side. It, it doesn't matter if you cover the line a little bit, and you can reinstate it um, with a darker ink uh, later if needed. So this part could be a little shady. I just add a little more ink, just clean the palette. And you, you don't have to fill in all the blank, so you can leave a little bit. Um, space between strokes, that's okay. Um, so I add a little yellow to the tip, I mean to the heel, just to add a little variation on, on this, uh, this side. And you can fill in that part. And leave some uh, white on the occasionally. And you can put a little, little water to soften the transition if you need it, just to fill in a little blank, but don't don't um, overdo that. You can make, I try to fake a little bleed because uh, this paper doesn't smear. It, it should smear a little bit, soften the edge a little bit. And just do that. But don't overdo that, it could make the melon looks like a uh, decay. Anyway, so that's the uh, semi size. Shot. Okay, I'm going to write Fang Mimic Bai Shi. So we all, we all, yeah, after our Fang Mimic. Some of you just learned this word in the calligraphy class, not even use it. Usually he indicates his uh, age. Uh, the, here he just says uh, old man from the uh, Plum Valley. We just say old man, Baishi Laurin, old master. And then you yeah, have uh, the ox still. And uh, my signature. I tried to kind of uh, uh, connect the calligraphy with the, the, the vine, kind of. Uh, so it, it dispersed the energy a little bit. This, this part is a little bit too dense. I feel so I want to kind of uh, disperse that a little bit. I just put a little pet under that. Okay. Okay, now oh, that's one. Um, yeah, this is part is a little over uh, too dense. So for the beginners, I think it don't, I try not to paint too many vines. Um, not, you know, I know this very enjoyable to do, so it, we tend to do too, too many. So try to minimize that. Okay. Let's see what we got in the handout. Let us see. This is a 
another uh, painting by 92 years old Bai Shi Lauren, or old man Bai Shi. Um, you can see the vine. Uh, it's very clear the main line is thicker than the tendril, right? The, the stem. Um, so you want to vary this uh, kind of line to create a kind of uh, uh, contrast or rhythm also. So not, not the same width. There is another um, plant very close to this. It's called gourd, uh, hulu gourd. Yeah, we, we can, uh, I can show you that uh, the, uh, here, here's a, a book, it's called uh, The Last uh, Paintings by Qi Bai Shi. Um, let me show you this. Okay, let me... On the, on the right side is the, the uh, very last painting he did um, just before he died at the age of 98. Can you see that? 98. See that? Okay. Um, <coughs> yeah, this painting was uh, his uh, very last, one of the very last painting uh, with his uh, age, 98. He probably died in 96, uh, actually, but he liked to, <laughs> to uh, uh, add to a couple years. Um, so 98 years old, Bai Shi, that's the inscription. And in this painting, you can see the, the wine uh, are done very uh, freely, right, without uh, the tendril, the loops, uh, but there is a little bit overlapping. Uh, this is gorgeous. You can do the pumpkin in the same style, but the leaves are abstract, so it's more abstract. When you get old, you know, you can do this. Uh, but in the beginning, uh, there's another uh, painting uh, on the right side of the, uh, the opposite page. You cannot really see clearly, but um, just vaguely, I, I want to. Uh, uh, point out that uh, he did only the vine without any leaf, without any indication of uh, what plant, without any melon or, or fruits on that or flower. Just the vine, it could be any, anything. And with uh, chicks, so um, you can just practice vine. And then he, he, until his very last day, he's still doing this kind of a drill. Uh, it, it seems very enjoyable, right? Um, it has the energy, the qi movement, the tai chi kind of uh, feel uh, when you practice this. Uh, try to vary the distance, the crossing um, of the lines, and uh, vary the sections between each stop within the line, the, the movement, and vary the uh, position of a uh, uh, stroke. You can do um, Mostly in, in tip concealed the stroke, I see. But you can twist it, you know. This one was done in, in the uh, year of uh, 96, 96. Can you still do it when, you, when we get <laughs> that old? I think you can see you get better and better. You, ha you got to live long and this kind of painting help you to nourish your energy and to express your qi. Uh, can you feel the, 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 the um, we say the, the qi movement, right? Um, so, uh, you, yeah, try to absorb the energy from reading. Uh, when, you, when we appreciate this kind of art, um, you, you, you not only just uh, um, see the space arrangement, uh, composition,